Hi, I'm Dr. Messina. Do these new mRNA vaccinations have the potential to get into my DNA and change my DNA permanently? Will I have fertility issues after receiving the vaccine? And can it lead to cancer? These are three common concerns that the general public has regarding these vaccinations. And it's understood because this is a new frontier in vaccine history. And because it has a genetic component to it, it does lead to a lot of fear and a lot of speculation. However, in this video, I'm going to discuss all three of these topics in detail. First, changing your DNA. The ability of that messenger RNA to get into your DNA and change it in any way, shape or form is absolutely zero. There is zero potential for that messenger RNA to get into your DNA. That being said, I'm going to ask you to watch the rest of the video because I'm going to put in some graphics and some explanation that'll make it very understandable as to just why it's impossible for that mRNA to get into and harm your DNA. And it'll be something that you'll be able to explain to others. The DNA in our bodies is located in the nucleus of the cell, which is in a nuclear membrane, as we see in orange. The light blue all around the side is the cytoplasm, and that's where all this mRNA activity is going to take place, the cytoplasm. If the DNA inside the nucleus needs to cause a physiochemical response, it does that through a series of reactions. First, the DNA will transcribe into a piece of RNA in the nucleus. That RNA is messenger RNA, and it's basically a genetic code giving a message to the ribosome to create a specific protein. That mRNA leaves the nucleus, goes to the cytoplasm, is picked up by the ribosome, and in a process known as translation, creates a protein. And that protein will instruct our body to do some physiological activity. When we take the vaccination, we have bypassed all of the nucleus steps. What we are doing is we have messenger RNA carrying genetic information from that protein spike of the virus and it's enclosed in a lipid molecule called a nanoparticle. That's injected into the muscle and it makes its way to the cell and gets taken into the cell where the lipid part is dissolved placing that mRNA nicely into the cytoplasm of our cell. The ribosome comes along, sees this messenger RNA, and creates a protein. That protein is going to instruct our immune system to seek out this protein spire that's seen on the COV2 viruses. That's how the vaccine works. Now, you might wonder, well, how long is this messenger RNA going to stay in my cell? Well, once the ribosome starts making protein, the cell immediately sends lytic enzymes to it and chops up the mRNA into tiny little pieces where it's absorbed. So the vaccine mRNA is not floating in our cells for the rest of our lives. It's in there for a very short time. As soon as the protein is made, the mRNA is destroyed. So now let's just say that mRNA wants to get into the nucleus and get in and blend with our DNA. It cannot. And the reason it can't is there are three major steps involved and the vaccine lacks chemicals and enzymes that are specifically required for that to happen. First, our body does not interpret mRNA. Our body works on double-stranded DNA. So step one, you would have to take that mRNA that came out of the vaccine and convert it to DNA. That's done with an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. It's not in the vaccine, it's not in the cell, therefore that step can't happen. Now, for the purpose of this video, let's say we did make that strand of DNA. And that DNA goes up to the nucleus. It cannot get into the nucleus because the nuclear membrane requires nuclear entry codes. It's basically a histochemical process. 
It's like a lock and a key. You have to have the specific combination of both for it to work. Well, the DNA doesn't have the nucleocode to get in. The cell doesn't have the nucleocode to get in. And it's a very specific code. Therefore, step two, that newly formed DNA cannot get into the nucleus. Let's say for this video, that piece of DNA did get formed did manage to get through the nuclear membrane and now wants to intermingle with our DNA. Well, it has to become integrated into our DNA and it's done by an enzyme called integrase, which the vaccine doesn't have, the cell doesn't have, therefore it cannot happen, it cannot get integrated into our DNA. This makes it completely impossible for the mRNA from the vaccine to get into our nucleus and to intermingle and change our DNA. It can't be converted to DNA because we lack reverse transcriptase. It can't get through the nuclear membrane because it lacks the nuclear entry codes. And it can't become integrated in our DNA. Therefore, there's no concern about any DNA changes with any of these mRNA vaccinations. Now let's get to the infertility questions. Regarding infertility, I looked at data presented by the American Academy of Reproductive Medicine and the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. These groups tend to be conservative, which is why you'll find something as innocuous as laser hair removal is contraindicated or not recommended during pregnancy or during breastfeeding. Yet, it was recommended that pregnant women have the vaccination due to a higher risk of severe disease. The Academy of Reproductive Medicine went as far as saying that people in the middle of an IVF cycle should also receive the vaccination. It was felt that even though it's a relatively new vaccine, and now we have millions of people vaccinated, that the risks are small if they exist at all. The obstetrical societies also felt that because these vaccines lack virus, either live or killed, there's an extra margin of safety in them in the pregnant patient. The fact that it just has messenger RNA in it and no viral particles. So there really isn't a big concern for having reproductive problems after receiving this vaccination. As a matter of fact, during the course of the clinical trials, 23 women became pregnant in the midst of getting their mRNA vaccinations. And finally, we're going to get to, can it cause cancer? When we wanna answer that question, it's very interesting to look at how these mRNA vaccines even came to be. Because on the surface, it seems like they just came out of the thin air, when that's not the case at all, especially with the company Moderna. Moderna was specifically interested in making the new frontier in chemotherapeutic agents and therapies. And they had found that by targeting proteins on tumors, they might be able to, on occasion, create an mRNA vaccination that will attack that tumor. And in certain instances, it does. And the whole idea of that was the potential to create custom-made chemotherapies, finding exactly what type of protein markers an individual has on their specific malignancy, create an mRNA vaccine that will set up our immune system to attack that tumor and using our own immune system to attack the tumor versus chemotherapeutic agents. So these drugs were originally made to combat cancer. I hope this video answered some of your questions and alleviated some of your concerns. It's not going to change your DNA. I wouldn't be concerned about fertility issues and it's not going to give you cancer. Take care, have a great day, and stay safe.